peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Easter each year, we celebrate the risen Christ as the Good Shepherd, calling all of us to follow him, to listen to his voice as he leads us to eternal life. We acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. First reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to you, for to this, you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who just, judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep. But you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of a stranger. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he is trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Every fourth Sunday of Easter, we are given this image of the risen Christ as the Good Shepherd. And most of us have never seen a shepherd as Jesus speaks of them. In that day, we know the shepherds were the poorest of the poor. They slept out in the fields with their sheep. As our Pope has said, they smelled like the sheep. And they knew their flock, as we hear in this gospel passage. The shepherds would gather their sheep together at night in one pen, with one of them probably lying across the entranceway. So no one kept the sheep better than those shepherds dedicated to their own. They knew each of their sheep the way you know one of your dogs or cats or pets. A very profound knowledge. They knew their strengths and their limitations. They cared about their sheep. They loved them. They were even willing to suffer and die to protect them. And that's the image Jesus used to try to tell all of us through the centuries how much he loves us, how he cares for us, how he seeks to protect us from the evil one. Yes, Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We recognize his voice as he continues all through the centuries to speak to those whom he has appointed Shepherds in his name, the bishops, the pastors of the church. Yes, and it may seem strange, we speak of Jesus the Good Shepherd, but we also speak of Jesus the Lamb, the Lamb of God, as we have him depicted in the stained glass window over our sanctuary. Jesus the Shepherd, who died for his sheep, who died that we might live. As he says, he has come 
that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And yes, like Jesus, we are called not only to be sheep in the flock of Christ, but also to be shepherds with him, to help Jesus the Good Shepherd reach out and touch the lives of others. As we've said this weekend, in every Catholic parish of our diocese, we are appealing for your support of the annual Faith and Charity Appeal. <clears throat> so I read this letter to you from our bishop. I speak to you today in gratitude. Thank you for participating in last year's Faith and Charity Catholic Appeal. Your generosity provided spiritual, physical, and emotional support to our brothers and sisters who were in need this year. On their behalf, I thank you. This year, the Faith and Charity Catholic Appeal is shining the light of Christ. We are all responsible for bringing Christ to others. When you support the Faith and Charity Catholic Appeal, you are shining the light of Christ and bringing hope to your neighbors. You are accompanying those on the margins, caring for the poor and vulnerable, proclaiming the gospel through youth, young adults, and campus ministries, and Catholic education. By your generosity, our faith community is strengthened now and into the future. Jesus said, shine your light before others. Our faith and charity ministries bring the light of Christ's love to our communities. It is a light that comforts, heals, and strengthens. The Faith and Charity Catholic Appeal, shining the light of Christ, is a call to action, helping us care for the needs of our people and form the next generation of faith-filled leaders for our parishes and the broader community. Please join me in supporting this vital appeal and prayerfully consider a generous donation. May God bless you, Bishop William Kenyon. Indeed, if you want to read more about all the programs that are made possible by this appeal. There are copies of the diocesan newspaper at the exits for you with lots of stories about all those programs and services. I invite you now to take one of the envelopes you have there in the pews on the appeal. I know some of you have already received the information in the mail. Some of you have already responded generously. I thank you for that. And certainly we don't want you to fill a second form. But even if you think you may not be able to contribute this year, it helps us if you do complete one of the forms and then we will not have to bother you later. So if you look at the form on the lower left side, we invite you to please take one of those pens and print your name, first and last name, clearly, along with your address. And on the next line, parish, of course you put St. Helena, H-E-L-E, N A. If you're from another parish, you can put their name, or you can still put St. Helena's. 
And then we invite you to please sit, sign that form and provide, if you can, your email address or telephone number in case there's some question about your response and we need to contact you later. On the upper right side of the form, you see a number of suggested total amounts of, in the appeal. We do hope that many of you will be willing to pledge over the seven months of the appeal. So you see there a breakdown of how much each seven month contribution would be. So whatever, if it's one of these uh, totals or your, some other total, please put that in the box beneath it, mark total pledge. You don't have to contribute anything today, but if you wish to, to give cash or a check, then you put that amount in the box marked enclosed, subtract that from the total pledge for the next box, the balance due. If you're giving a check, it helps if you write the number of your check on that line. And if you are giving a check to make it out to St. Helena's Church, then we will send one check into the diocese. You can, of course, make your contributions by using a credit card. If so, we need that information on the upper left side of the form. You need to tell us what kind of credit card it is, and then the account number, the expiration date, the name on the card, and then we need to have you sign on that bottom line. When you've completed your form, if you would then fold it and seal it, and we ask you please to place the envelope in the collection. There's only the one collection today. So if you can place your envelope there, we'd really appreciate your help in helping our parish to reach the target set for us as our part of this effort of all of our parishes to reach out, to help those who need our love and support, that they come to know through us the Good Shepherd, Jesus the Savior, who loves them and calls them also to follow him into eternal life. Again, we thank you for your generosity in this great effort. Throughout Lent and Easter season, we are renewing our baptismal commitment to Christ. So we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered the punches Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he ascended into hell. And it ceased to be the hand of God, the Father of the man of the church. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the resurrection of the body, the life of the last. As the
the children of God, we dare to approach the eternal God and Father through Jesus, our priest and good shepherd. We present our petitions. The response is, Good Shepherd, hear our prayer. That all people may come to hear and recognize the truth that Jesus is the one and only Savior who can deliver us from all sin and evil, we pray. Good Shepherd, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering because of recent storms and flooding, and for the victims of war, terrorism, and the persecution of Christians, we pray. Good, Good Shepherd, hear our prayer. That many men and women will answer the call of the Good Shepherd to be shepherds of his people as priests and religious, we pray. Good Shepherd, hear our prayer. That God will bless all who are working so hard and contributing so much to the success of our annual carnival, we pray. Good Shepherd, hear our prayer. For the children of our parish, preparing to receive their first Holy Communion, we pray. Good Shepherd, hear our prayer. That the Lord will be with all who contribute and pledge to the faith and charity, Catholic appeal, and that he will bless those who benefit by the programs it funds, we pray. For those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, especially Michael Gilbertson, Alex Newton, Michelle Miller, Marianne King, Patricia Darmanin, and all the sick of our community and families, we pray. For those who have listened to the Good Shepherd and followed him in a life of faith, especially John Lawrence Watson, for whom this Mass is being offered. That they may follow him into eternal life and glory, we pray. We pause in silence to remember our personal needs. In trust we pray. Father, you sent your only Son to be our Good Shepherd, to lay down his life that we might live. May we who believe in him be faithful members of his flock and good shepherds of his love to one another. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Remember to place your response to the appeal in our one collection.
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Amen. We share the sign of Christ's peace. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 325, Eat This Bread, number 325.
392. 